Hello everybody, today we're going to take a quick look at Eternals, the latest film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, directed by Chloe Zhao. Many thousands of years ago, some monstrous creatures called Deviants invaded Earth. The Celestial Arishem sent ten superpowered beings, collectively known as the Eternals, to Earth to take out the Deviants. After thousands of years of fighting the Deviants and being worshipped by the humans as gods, they fulfill their mission and basically go their separate ways while waiting for Arishem to return. But then in the present day, another Deviant shows up out of nowhere. Seems they missed one or two. And so these divided super beings must reunite to save the world from certain doom. This felt very different from the other MCU movies, mainly because this basically just stands alone as its own separate thing. They do mention Thanos and the Snapshot, and even give us some new information about the Mad Titan, which I won't get into because spoilers. But for the most part, they're just doing their own thing, and what they do has very little effect on anything else in the MCU. Until we get to the after credit scene. And I can't really say that I love this one, but I didn't hate it either. I would just say... It's fine. There's not a whole lot of stuff that really stood out to me, good or bad. It was just fine. Unfortunately, one thing that did stand out to me was some of these characters are not terribly original. Icarus, who is played by Richard Madden, is basically Superman. He can fly, he has super strength, he can shoot laser beams out of his eyes. He's Superman. One of the characters in the movie even mistakes him for Superman. And I believe Zhao even said in an interview that her take on this character was inspired by Zack Snyder's Superman. And I would like to point out that spelling out that this character's ripoff doesn't magically make it okay. It's still a ripoff. Also, some of the Eternals seem a bit redundant in terms of their superpowers, like Icarus and Kingo, who's played by Kumail Nanjiani, both shoot bolts of energy. It's just... Kingo shoots him out of his hands and Icarus out of his eyes. Ran out of ideas already? Gilgamesh, who is played by Don Lee, is the strong guy. And that's about it. He's the strong guy. Makari, played by Lauren Ridloff, is a speedster. She's basically the Flash. Except, unlike the Flash, she is deaf. And I suppose her being deaf would actually work to her advantage as a speedster since she'd basically be immune to sonic booms. And she does use her powers very well. It's probably the best use of any kind of super speed powers I've seen in any medium. The problem I had with Makari, which isn't really a fault of the character or the actress, is they didn't do a whole lot with her, which is kind of disappointing since she's the first deaf superhero in the MCU, and that's a pretty significant milestone. Or at least it should be. But after all of the Deviants were destroyed, or they thought they were, most of the Eternals went off and did their own thing, and Makari chose to just stay behind on their ship and read books for a couple thousand years. Really? That was it? You couldn't think of anything else for her to do? I do realize you have a limited amount of time to tell the stories of ten different characters, but really? I also want to mention Sprite, played by Leah McHugh, who is an interesting character because she is the only one of the Eternals who has the body of a child. And of course, she's technically not a child, she's lived for thousands of years, but she's stuck forever looking like a child. And this complicates things a bit, because over time she has fallen in love with Icarus, but of course she can't pursue that, because that would be weird. And there's a point where she asks, why on earth did the gods make her this way? And that's a very good question. Sure would be nice if the movie even attempted an answer. Of course, the real answer is because Jack Kirby was into some weird shit back then. But the movie's answer is just Argyle Fargo mysterious ways. I don't know. I also thought Kingo was a fun character, which I think is mainly because Nanjiani is not capable of not having fun. He is sort of the celebrity of the group, as after the Deviants were destroyed, or so they thought, he went off and became a Bollywood star, which is kind of perfect for Kumail. The one problem I have with Kingo is Kumail put an insane amount of work in the gym to get his body ready to be a superhero. And at no point in the movie do we see him with a shirt off. This is a wasted opportunity. I mean, he put in the work. Why would you not reward that work? Come on, MCU. Druig, played by Barry Keoghan, I'm probably saying that wrong, also had an interesting path. But this character kind of rubbed me the wrong way, after the Eternals go their separate ways, since he has the ability to control minds, 
and can thus rob people of their free will, he basically goes off and forms his own little slave colony. And I think the other Eternals were a little too forgiving of that. Like, they clearly weren't happy about it, but at the same time, they didn't seem to really want to do much to stop him from doing his weird mind control thing. And I didn't like that. And throughout the movie, I couldn't help but think this was the MCU's attempt at making an X-Men clone, since for a long time, Fox still had the rights to the X-Men. Obviously, not the case anymore, but probably still was the case when this movie was in the planning stages. And really, this was their second attempt at an X-Men alternative, the first one being Inhumans, and... Well, I was about to say we all know how that went, but I'm not sure that's true because I don't think many people saw it. And this movie had to juggle a lot of characters in two and a half hours. And I can't help but wonder if this would have been better served as a TV series rather than a movie. Visually... I have no complaints, this movie looks fantastic. And while it wasn't as heavy on the comedy as a lot of MCU movies are, it still had some funny moments. There is that bit from the trailer where Icarus smashes the table. I, I did like that. It did have an interesting plot twist towards the end, won't give it away, but I liked what they did with it. The mid and post credit scenes set up some interesting things for the future that I am looking forward to. Also, I really like the relationship between Gilgamesh and Thena, who's played by Angelina Jolie. There's a point in the movie where she kinda loses her mind and starts to go berserk, and when gods go berserk, bad shit happens. And he basically took on the responsibility of caring for and protecting her while she's trying to keep her fragile mind intact, and I thought their relationship was very touching. And it didn't really feel like there was any kind of romantic connection between the two, it's just his friend was in trouble and he wanted to help. I liked it. Overall, like I said, I think this would have been better served as a TV series rather than a two and a half hour movie because there's only so much you can do with all of these characters in a movie's limited runtime. But it did a lot of good things as well, and I didn't think it was half bad. If you see it in a theater, I don't think it's worth paying full price, but I could see watching this as a matinee. Or if you don't feel comfortable going to a theater right now, which is totally understandable, it'll be on Disney Plus eventually. And that's all I have to say about Eternals. Till next time, take care.